Welcome back. Will Warsham joins us now for this week's Speaking Legal Discussion. Hi, good to see you. Nice good to be here. All right, so this question. All right, yeah, here we go. Let's sure. take a look. We are going to be traveling for a month or so this summer and are considering hiring a house sitter. Is there anything we need to do to make sure nothing goes wrong? <laughs> uh, well, you know, something can always go wrong. Yeah. yeah. yeah but it's there's hard. no 100% no, out there. But, you know, there's probably some things that we can do to make sure things go as well as possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, the first thing I always recommend to people when you're hiring somebody, you're entering into any type of agreement, is let's put our expectations down in writing. Uh -huh. So the first thing I would do is figure out, let's get a document, contract, sure, and say, you know, this is what we expect you to be doing in exchange for sitting at our house, staying at our house. Right. Also in that document, I say, here's the things we don't expect mm -hmm. to be happening. So if you don't want parties, if you don't want more than so many people over, you should specify all the expectations in writing. You need to be as complete as possible when you write those types of documents. Mm -hmm. yeah. If something were to happen, such as maybe the washing machine has a terrible leak or those sort of things, maybe should it be in the contract that you say, if anything like that goes wrong, please contact us so that you know, I mean, things can happen. The wood sure. floor can rot and mm -hmm. all kinds of things like that. Yeah, obviously, you're going to want to have good contact information. If you got a list of preferred repair folks, vendors, things right. like that, you might put them on the list as well. You know, the more interesting thing here that can come out of something like this is if somebody is invited to your property, you invite them to be there, right? and they have a legitimate right to be there, and they hurt themselves, mm -hmm. they fall because you've negligently maintained something, then you could be liable for that. That's what you have homeowner's insurance for. That prohibition, that provision actually is not going to generally apply to trespassers. Okay. So, so if somebody is there without your permission and they injure themselves on your property, property, generally you're going to be protected from a lawsuit or a claim mm -hmm. against someone who is a trespasser. But now we're in, entering into a situation where you have given access and rights to your property to a third person who might invite someone, converting what might previously have been a trespasser into a now invitee. Right. Yeah, they're, they're kind of your agent all yeah. of a sudden. That's exactly are they not? right. You've given them care, custody, and control of that property, and if they exercise that in a way that you don't want, that can get you, you into some trouble. Once again, we can refer back to a written document to where you know, they can't invite people over. They can right. only invite a specified list of persons over. They can't invite more than so many people over some things like that, that, at least you can limit their ability to get you into a liability situation that you didn't anticipate. And right. I, I would assume, you know, you have to really think this contract, you really need to get it down to the letter. I mean, uh, because there are going to be instances, well, you never said, you never, right. well, if it's right. there, you have none of those problems. Well, it certainly can help, and it's very, very difficult for anybody, lawyer, not to anticipate all the contingencies, but that, of course, is one of the things lawyers are trained in. I would probably also talk to my insurance agent mm -hmm. and just right. say, hey, this is what we're thinking about doing. want to make sure we have the right types of coverages in place, just in case something was to go wrong. Yeah. Should you have video of your house? Well, I'm a you big, love video. I'm a big I know fan you love video. video. But I mean, uh, you know, where things are in place and different things mm -hmm. like that? Yeah, I, I would. You, you're talking about taking video yeah. of the inventory of your yeah. house. Of course, most people are going to have, or some people are going to have done that mm -hmm. for insurance purposes right. anyway. I'm a big fan of, of security cameras, video mm -hmm. security right. cameras. And a lot of them, uh, like the Nest app, the Nest cams now, they upload the video straight to the Internet. And so you can actually access that remotely either live or if you're paid for the storage, back to up to seven or even 30 days. Now, you know, the thing that I've, I've heard also in the past, if you're going to be out of town, it never hurts to let the police department know, hey, mm -hmm. I've got someone staying at my house, but I'm going to be out of town. Yeah, I can't imagine that that would hurt. You know, a lot of the other times things people do with that, you know, pick up the newspaper, right. turn yes. the lights on and off. Make but that's sure the point of right. having a house sitter or something like that. One other thing on the video, you probably should absolutely make your house sitter aware that you do have cameras and where they are. Exactly. You don't want to get into a situation where you recorded something that you didn't want to record. Right. Uh, because they, they didn't, didn't, or they didn't want you to record. Right. Yeah. Uh, I don't, in Missouri, uh, uh, you would have a problem with that anyway yeah. because of wiretap laws. Um, right. So you wouldn't want to, you would need to make sure that that house sitter knew that Right. The premises were being surveilled and right. recorded. And you, and you might ahead, start your, with a contract. Yeah, uh -huh. and let your neighbors know too, so they don't think somebody's breaking in. That might be a good idea. Great too, ideas. Right? All right, if you have a legal question for Will, you can email him at wwarsham at keller10.com, and he'll answer your question on the air. Thank you so Thanks, much. Thanks, Will. Good You're to welcome. See you. All right, we'll be back right after this. a special weather report from the Weather Lab. That's right. If you've been watching the crawl at the bottom of your screen, when you 